here to do is uh, look at um, music export and what's on offer uh, at the moment. It's not just into Europe, but uh, obviously Brexit uh, era is potentially is going to um, bring restrictions. Um, more from the um, touring perspective, I think, um, and obviously various legislation issues uh, could arise from that. But we're not going to dwell on the uh, negatives. We're going to try and um, highlight some positives. And um, what, uh, that's my contact details. Uh, what DIT do? Department for International Trade. I'm their music consultant, uh, specialist, whatever name they give me uh, this, this year. Um, I'm from the music industry. Uh, Merck, who was on the stage earlier, him and I used to work together when I was at EMI, when he was with Iron Maiden, uh, and many other acts throughout the years. We've known each other a long time as well. Um, so hopefully what I'm bringing to the uh, table is some experience that are going to help us to... Um, oh, well done. They've put all of the different events that we were going to talk about up on the screen. And um, so the, the idea is to try and give you an insight into the things that uh, Department for International Trade, along with all of the partners that we work with throughout the year, um, can bring to the table. Uh, we work with AIM a lot and the BPI in particular on trade missions um, and the like, and uh, which take you to different parts of the world um, and on various events, some of which, well, all of which, I think, are up here on the screen. Um, and uh, Chris, do you want to say a few words about some of the events, maybe the missions that we work yeah, with Yeah, we, um, we do sort of two types of missions. Firstly, are to existing events. So there's great old events like Medem that have been going... 40 odd years, you know, looking at 50 52 odd years, years, 52 years, um, through to newer events in upcoming territories. We obviously don't just focus on the UK, Europe, and um, we also look overseas. We obviously do a trade mission to uh, Los Angeles every year, which is a sync based mission. But we look at new developing territories such as China, um, India, and Phil and I are both going to Mukon and Zanderai festivals in South Korea uh, next week. So we've picked a quite interesting town to be traveling to that part of the world. But hey ho, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so what we do on these things is essentially we take you as a group of British companies and that is across the gamut of the industry. So we have artists, we have managers, we have labels. Um, we even let, you know, uh, ancillary people like, you know, um, distributors, etc., etc., come on these. And what we give you is a little bit of a, of a hand-holding session there when you initially get to these overseas places. But we put you in touch pretty much straight away with everyone that you want to meet. Um, for example, in China, we did a mission there this year. That was attending the Sounds of the City Conference in Beijing. The first thing we did was have, um, you know, some local uh, representatives of IPI there to give you sort of market overseas. But then the next thing we did was get pretty much every single sort of Chinese streaming store or retail store you'd need to meet. Uh, and then also the uh, social media stores you need to get over there. So we do pretty much get you straight in right uh, on the ground running at these events. So you're not just attending a conference where there's 200, 300 people, but you're actually getting sort of handheld and really in uh, right at the top of these things. Um, we are always looking for new markets to, to move into. As I said, South Korea is our first time we've been there this year. China was a mission that used to take part a few years ago, now being restarted, the same with India. And obviously with any of these markets, you know, with, the, with our friends in Parliament uh, trying to make as much of a mess as they can out of Brexit, I can see us doing far more in Europe over the next few I'm years. I'm glad I didn't say that. So, <laughs> so you can't, mate, I can. Um, so as Phil says, you know, we're looking for you know, cross-industry, um, not only collaboration on the development of these things and the organisation, but also we want a broader representation of companies attending with us. You know, we've, take, we've taken to, to take you know, lots and lots of different companies on these overseas missions, and I think they all get a lot out of them. Uh, and obviously, you know, the question I keep saying, or the, the confirmation I keep giving to everyone that we speak to is, you know, if the territories that you think, you know, are right for what you want to do in your business, you know, speak to, you know, any of the trade associations, anyone at DIT, and nine times out of ten, we'll already be thinking about those territories, and we're just looking for some confirmation of people who want to attend them. That's right. Um, the groups, we normally take around 20 to 25 companies, delegates, 
with us, but with the LA Sync mission, for example, we actually, um, it's closer to 50. We have a maximum of 50 we would take anywhere because after that it would become a conference. Um, and as Chris said, we, we always try to make sure that you're getting a great education on the market, great network, networking opportunities, and you're getting to meet the people that you really want to meet and are going to make a difference to you. Um, we've also, with DIT, started, um, actually four years ago, started to do songwriting camps uh, to Nashville, um, and we've got the fifth one of those coming up um, at uh, the second week of October. This is where we take 16 songwriters, stroke producers, to of all different levels of their careers um, to Nashville to work for a week, uh, five days actually, in writing rooms and studios with um, local uh, based uh, writers and producers. And uh, at the end of the week, obviously, the object, the exercise is to come out with uh, at least 40 pieces of music, uh, songs written, uh, either to brief or, or to projects that some of the artists and writers that themselves are looking to take on. Um, and off the back of that, this year for the first time, we actually, um, alongside the Elliot Sync mission, which Chris has already mentioned, um, we actually put a songwriting camp around that. And um, the idea was to do uh, exactly the same format, but with a smaller group of people, but to write to briefs from music supervisors for projects that they were actually working on at the time. And um, so we ended up with 16 pieces of music after four days, four writing rooms, etc. each day. And um, two of them, three months later, two of them have already been placed into movies, which is quite a... And, and you're thinking to yourself, what's all this got to do with export? But, but everything that we're doing is to try and help drive you um, to the marketplace, to, to give you an insight into the marketplace, open the doors, um, because government offices consulates, embassies, high commissions around the world. Um, that's what they're there for, to try and help drive um, UK business out and bring revenue streams back to the UK. Mm. And one of the, one of the ways in which we, um, about three years ago, I think it was, um, the BPI came to number 10 and put forward an idea um, to, uh, for a scheme which was eventually uh, named uh, MEGS, Music Export Growth Scheme. Um, and that's funded through uh, the Great Campaign and DIT um, and administered through the BPI. And uh, it's grants of five to 50,000 yeah, Do you want to give a bit more information? Yeah, it's a scheme that's been running for about two and a half years. We've given uh, 2.2 million pounds to 150 acts. Uh, they range from opera to grime to rock, metal, dance, just about every genre you can imagine. Um, they are specifically for overseas activities based around touring, although they do cover things like songwriting camps. The only thing they don't cover is showcasing um, conferences because that's covered by the PRS Foundation's International Showcase Fund. Um, but, you know, we've uh, funded acts uh, across the musical gamut, across the world. I think we've had North, South America, Australasia, Europe, um, even some clever guys in Belfast realised that Republic of Ireland counted as overseas, so we had some quite interesting ones for Ireland. Um, and we really have been quite lucky on that. And for every pound that we've invested on that, we reckon there's about a £10, I think it's £10.32 back uh, to the economy. It's worth mentioning as well, just to sort of go back to the trade missions. On, on the missions that we've done so far this year, I think not including South by Southwest, uh, the sort of return back from all the delegates was about 14 and a half, 15 million pounds. So it shows that, you know, you do go on these things, you do get a lot of business. Um, but going back to the Megs thing, it's basically an application-based process. Uh, it tended to be a sort of PDF download that you filled in, but glory be, we've managed to get the computers working and it will be online via uh, a new system in January. And there tends to be three rounds a year, which in essence, you're, you're sending a business plan in for you, your act, um, the act you manage, the act on your label, or, or a songwriter you're involved with to do some overseas activity, and we part fund 70% of it. Um, it's paid retrospectively, so in essence, you spend the money and we give you it back. Um, and as I say, it's quite a long, laborious process. The, the application form is about 18 pages long. For those of you who are lucky enough to fill in a, a mortgage application, it's twice as bad as that, but you get the money for free, so don't complain. Um, there, are, there is lots of info on the BPI website, but obviously both my Phil, Phil and myself you know, will be able to answer questions if you've got particular ones either at the end here or if you want to come and grab us. But there's lots of information on our website about that. And that is one of the you know, direct consequences of you know, some of the international work we've done. 
Um, we're trying to get more money out of the government for lots of international stuff. Doesn't always happen, but you know it's definitely one that we're looking at. Uh, and the Megs thing in, in particular is, is proving really successful, and it's quite some big wins we've had with, with some big artists. Um, it's worthwhile mentioning that you know it's uh, the company is the one that's uh, the eligibility criteria is on. Um, you know, so that means that you as a company have to be an SME. So in essence, you have to be less than. I think it's 250 employees and less than yeah. 50 million quid. But that does mean if you manage an artist that is on a major label, that doesn't preclude you from being uh, selected or getting money. However, 94.5% of all the money given out has gone to, gone to independent signed acts. So you can probably guess by that the major label ones do get far more scrutinised. Uh, but if you've got any questions about that, you know, please just yeah. come ask Phil and I at the end. Um, just one quick point before I'm going to give you two or three minutes if you want to ask any questions. On South by Southwest, Chris mentioned that. We, uh, along with all of the different partners, uh, AIM, PPL, PRS, uh, etc., cetera, um, run um, a, a venue in, in Austin every year, which we brand the British Music Embassy. We put full British production, uh, full British crew into that as well. And it's become probably um, the best, certainly the best small venue in the city during uh, South by Southwest. And um, we normally showcase around 50 to 55 UK acts every year over the week at South by Southwest. So again, if you're thinking about uh, attending that event, you know, come and talk to us or take my email details and um, drop me a line in the near future. Um, so we've got about four minutes left, I think. Uh, 3.55, it says here. Uh, any questions from anyone? We can continue talking, I'm sure, but anybody got a specific question or anything that we just no, talked about? No, I'm far too shy. No? Sleep, okay, so you all know everything. Sorry? Hello. Sorry, yep. yep. Is this mic moving? Tell us who um, you are. Just out of interest, just from a rights rights management perspective, who owns the rights when you do the songwriting? Who owns the um, rights? Yeah. From a publishing perspective, everyone gets the, it's three people in a room. They get thirty three and a third percent each. They normally write down thirty three, and we try <laughs> to claim the extra percent, but of course, but uh, that they forget. But no, seriously, everybody gets the same split unless they agree in the room that they're going to split it in a different way. Um, obviously, they're not mastered. Um, the LA Sync one, um, we did try to get to a position where they were actually um, mastered. But again, um, the rights went to the people in the room, and uh, no one else is involved. And it's all split sheets are signed on the day, um, and everything's done properly. And, and sorry, just out of interest, with, with when you went to the Chinese market, how did they embrace the the streaming world in, in, um, in rights management? Um, I mean, obviously, the Chinese music industry is, you know, is a, a slowly developing beast. Um, I mean, there's something ridiculous, like half a billion smartphones are in China. You know, everything is ad-free streaming. And there's a weird peculiarity that you, you've probably seen from some things in the press where you, you license your rights into one streaming store. They then license to all the other streaming stores. So it's a bit like, you know, giving your rights to Deezer, you know, who's, and then they then license it to Spotify on your behalf. Um, the, one of the tr things that we're trying to do, not only as a music industry, um, you know, in, in our little missions, but also all the lobbying we do with the government, is to make sure that, you know, the international partners we have, you know, have strong IP protection for, you know, for your rights. Um, not every country does. Um, obviously, we're looking at Brexit coming up very shortly. The one thing that we're, we're really keen on having in the UK is, you know, is good IP protection and copyright laws for you and your content. Um, as I say, with China, it, it tends to be a little bit of a rogue country, but they're starting to come on board now properly yeah. with, with rights. Um, the one thing I would add with China in particular is that, um, you know, they recognised three or four years ago that actually they've got a lot of copyright that they want to bring out into the rest of the world. And in order for them to try and do that and have us respect theirs, they've got to start and respect ours. And, and in turn, that's helped them to, to try and change legislation. And it's, as Chris said, it's a slowly moving beast, but there you go. Okay, so we've got uh, another question. Sorry. What's the criteria for the sync mission? What sort of size of catalog do you need to be considered for that? Um, we, we, look, we normally get about 75 to 80 applications. Um, and obviously, if we took um, 50 companies who owned two songs each, 
the music supervisors would soon get sick of us and not show up. So we try to have a good balance of and mix, but we, we also realize that you know, we want to try and encourage new companies, and that's exactly one of the reasons why we're here to talk about export, is encourage new companies to be looking to export and, and in the various ways. So everybody and anybody can apply. Um, there's no set rules. Um, we will try and get a good balance of smaller companies who've got maybe only two or three albums. We've had, on occasion, we've had artists themselves who maybe own five or six albums worth of material who come along. Um, and end up doing, but it's a great education. It's five days in um, five days in Los Angeles. We take over um, Studio A in um, Capitol Tower and um, old not people stopping. technology. <laughs> so are you that, stop it then? What when you give old people technology, mate? There this cancel it ain't working. There we go. I know it's still going. Hey, yeah, I see. <laughs> But uh, seriously, that's, that's what it's about. It's, um, we try and make sure that, that the panels that we're putting on are, you know, someone described it as a diploma in sync. That was one of the guys that came back. And, uh, and we've had some great results over the years. We were down in Bristol on Tuesday night this week because we've been doing a roadshow thing. And um, there's a company down there who came with us two years ago on, on the sync mission. He announced earlier in the year that he had a track in the new Star Wars movie. And this week, just in the last week, he's announced he's got something else and another big, big movie coming up. So once you get in there and you get that trust with those supervisors... Um, no, it wasn't. No. I think there's one guy just at the back there. Yeah, um, okay, just, last question. Yeah, I've just started a record label and I just want to know, how's it like... Um, is it quite hard to apply for BPI? How can I do it? Is it a long process? or For, for what? For the um, funding schemes? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's basically an application-based scheme. You know, it's in essence asking you about, um, you know, what your artist is, what kind of background they've got in the UK, uh, you know, and what you want to do with them internationally. It's uh, it really is sort of a, a business-based application. Um, so if it's a new artist that's starting out, it's probably not right for for you initially. But there are lots of other schemes that are available. Um, there's a really good um, guide on the unsigned guide. They do a really good funding guide. So something like, you know, Momentum from PRS Foundation might be suitable for you. But come and grab me afterwards. British Council, them. actually, yeah, yeah. If, if it's the funding side of it you're looking for, the British Council did a report last year, which uh, is still online. It's obviously a yeah. little bit out of date now because it's just over a yeah. year old. But it's still... Yeah. Pretty significant, and that would give you a lot of yeah. That and the, un the unsigned guide one's probably better, it gives you pretty much you know how you apply, etc. Yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah. But it's a pretty good one yeah. to do. And I think both AIM and the BPI um, have got you know insights into all of that as well, so it's certainly worth speaking to uh, to both. Um, I'm sure Chris will have a good chat with you afterwards as well if you've got the time. Okay, thank you very much for your time, and Cheers. sorry we ran over a bit longer, Laura. <laughs> <laughs>